Hello everybody and welcome to more BTS series Europe number three. We've got Power Rangers vs Prius. I'm Llama Down Under. We'll have someone for game two but my co-caster had to go and do something. Small emergencies, you know, cat on fire. Either way, let's get into it because we already have quite a bit of game on our hands folks. Got bands and picks flying out. We're gonna be seeing Lone Druid IO, pretty, pretty standard bands, pretty common, and Chen Nature's Prophet. The only thing surprising to me here out of all these picks is the early OD pickup. It's often a hero that teams wait on, especially since obviously for OD to be powerful, you need a certain. It's good against heroes with low int, where you know OD can get the really big int differential and then drop that Sanity's Eclipse on them. Against an Invoker in that mid lane, depending on how the ganks go, Invoker might even be able to win the lane. Although it's hard because Astral Imprisonment will give OD more than enough time to have some TP support rotation since it lasts for so long. But it is an interesting... I mean, Power Rangers clearly feel confident, wanted something that they think will win the mid lane. And we're confident in picking it up this early. So... In other news, we've got Morphling Broodmother ban out back. because you ban out the Broodmother if you don't uh, plan on drafting around it. And Witch Doctor being the other ban. We still have Faceless Void in the pool. Prius could also go for something like seconds, the Beastmaster, so Power Rangers might be deciding between a couple of those different offlaners. Five since Invoco seconds, always remaining. good with another hero that has some global presence. But it's the Batrider that they end up Dire getting rid of. A good hero in general right now, able to pick off one before the team fight or before the push, if that's what Prius could still be drafting their lineup around, and also has a good amount of magical damage to deal with Enchantress. Now, the Venge Invoker, always just a strong comp- oh, that- okay. Oops. Little brain fault there. That's the other reason that Power Rangers ban out the Batrider, of course. Ten they can't pick it remaining. because there's a Venge and the swap would always just be- saving people from that lasso, Five and then remaining. if you get both the Batrider and the Venge, your lineup's very powerful. There aren't great Reserve ways to deal time. with it. Oracle can help some, but it's not the best. Bane gonna be what Power Rangers pick. go for, so this Invoker now having to be very careful. If Enchantress gets an early smoke, brings that Bane with her, that should be an easy kill on the Invoker. It's very difficult to get away from that nightmare. Big ol' range on that spell. And for Prius? Lifestealer. Okay, not at all. I wasn't going to... There's no way I would have called that one. Lifesteal is really interesting. I'm expecting this to be the offlane lifestealer, not a core lifestealer. We've also seen a couple of teams... Cough, cough. It's Liquid. It's Kuroki doing this. <laughs> Running a support lifestealer that jungles, gets up an early Vlads, hops into an ancient creep. There's not great ways to kill ancient creeps early game. Because they have that magical immunity, it's very hard to target them. You just don't have enough Ten damage, physical damage, early in the game. And Power Rangers themselves get the Beast Master. Radiant team so, pick. and always a good pick. Gives your team a lot of extra bonus damage when you consider how Inner Beast works. And of course, all of that extra vision, vision very powerful. You still need wards up everywhere, but it helps a lot. You might be able to see a gank coming from some faraway place. You're going to be able to see the Venge coming in for the swap. Oracle going to be the response from Prius, a hero that's very good against the Beast Master. And I wouldn't be surprised if Power Rangers go for the Jug ban, just because Oracle plus Juggernaut, it's not the best because there's a lot of creeps that Juggernaut would have to be worried about with the Omni Slash, but Jug is a really solid carry right now. They could also ban out the Gyrocopter, another Five hero that performs remaining. very well against all of these units, and will be able to secure a kill or two on the Beast Master, you know, Fortunes end again time. into Rocket Barrage. Really strong. So. And we'll be seeing... Power Rangers taking a long time. I mean, there's a lot of other heroes. They might also be concerned about the Spectre coming out, since the Sunstrike is global, but it's the Juggernaut that we talked about. Radiant team Prius back. may also end up banning the Gyro if they think Power Rangers will take that. I think a lot of it depends on whether they are comfortable with another carry, because Spectre... 
Spectre requires quite a bit of farm. She can actually fight really early Ten with that ult. You can go the urn, drums, whatever Five on earth you want next remain. build. It's really pretty flexible after the urn drums. Because you can go back for the radiance, you can go for a quick monitor, you can go from a defusal here, which is actually pretty nice since there are a couple of int heroes, but Prius may not want to give up the gyro, even though I think it's a nice pick for them. Since Power Rangers could grab it. It's always like you nightmare someone, you walk up to them, you rocket barrage them. Lifestealer does have that rage, but it's no longer full magical immunity, it's magic resistance. So you can still be targeted by a few things. And Anti Mage is going to be what they ban out. Dia Not wanting that Invoker to become a big old int bomb. And rightly so, they don't have a heap of lockdown. Radiant Power Rangers go with the Sven, and I have to imagine Prius, Spectre, or Gyro is what I would be thinking. But they, of course, might have something else in mind, and there's always player's preference. Lycan. So it's going to be that Lycan. This is going to be an early... Well, they can play it as an early push strat with the changes to Lycan some. He can scale a bit better. But there's certainly nice kill potential in lane, and those wolves gonna be a real pain for this beast monster to deal with. At the same time, Sven, a really strong hero. Odie can easily set up solid storm hammers for him, as can the nightmare. You know, you get storm hammered, people pound away at you, maybe you escape a little bit, Bane throws out that nightmare, or vice versa. It's not so easy for a life stealer to get out of these engagements. And with that, folks, we had it on in when people pick up their heroes. The obligatory waste time at the beginning, folks. We're definitely deciding what to do with our lineups. Going on here. <laughs> and a pause as well. Always fun. Both sides actually have some potential for early push. OD isn't... Wow, this OD set is terrifying. OD isn't the greatest pusher, but the rest of their lineup, obviously Sven, excellent for pushing with that cleave. Big Num's going to be able to pick up creeps, if that's what the Enchantress wants to do. And the Inner Beast. When you have someone like that backing you up, the God Strength is so much more powerful. You just get so much more damage out in this game. So... We'll also be seeing... Monstermind has picked up the point in Exhort... There's a couple of things which will nicely set up for Sun Strikes. I'm not 100% sure yet, though, if he's going to be going Max Exhort. And once again, Prius plays the Horde. They always do. They love this. Sometimes they place it a little bit more to the left. But this is a nice spot because, as you can see, it gives a good amount of vision of people coming in from the tower. You can get a good idea of where the offlaner is. And it's usually too far to the right that people don't deward it. Although, if they've done any homework on Prius at all, they'll know all about this ward. So I'm not, I'm not kidding. They use it almost every game. We're actually going to have a contest for the runes. This is pretty unusual. These days we normally see a bounty go one apiece. And in an early team fight here... It's hard to say who really has the edge. Oh, Astral Imprisonment has been skilled. So that might give it over to Prius. The Sven is also waiting top. They know that they're all there, so Prius is saying that they think they're gonna be taking this fight. Mastermind coming in. The Howl has been popped. Oh, the Lycan immediately put into that Astral Imprisonment, and RM taking way too much damage. The auto attacks have it, and now Zenigato also in a bad spot. There's the slow coming out from the ball and the ball, and they are getting two kills here. Very well played there from PR, knowing that they could totally win that team fight. Off to a good start. Getting a first blood on OD. And I believe... Okay, Venge actually got the bounty there, but it's not worth losing two kills. OD off to a great start. Not quite as good as having the bounty, but it's not like Invoker got one either. So, this mid matchup. Expecting it to be a bit in favor of the OD after those events. Looking down bottom... Just as any goddess, he's gonna need the Oracle to come back to lane. Once the Oracle's here, they have a great way of pushing this Beast Monster out of lane. Of course, he has already gotten quite a bit of experience, and these two creeps gonna put him in a great spot. 
Oh, and this is a set I haven't seen. That's spell freaking me out. You can see the lifesteal of playing pretty far back. If this lane ends up being too difficult, he can pretty easily transition into jungling, especially once he picks up that iron talent. But right now, he's just trying to leech. Oh, we have a go on bottom. They're going on Cheshire Cat. Big Num has come down here. Nets onto one, so Zenigata can't land more damage. And now Zenigata actually eat, taking a lot of damage here. Needs to eat a tree or something. Has already consumed the Fairy Fire. Oh, Big Num doesn't come around for the other auto attacks. Then he got a juking, trying to eat his way down, but no, he's going to be found by Cheshire Cat, and the last auto attack comes out. PR are off to a fantastic start. They are winning two out of three lanes pretty dang dominantly, and I don't know if Pwn having level two is enough. So, Illidan. Sweet feet. Gonna be having a blast on that top lane. Invoker's starting to get a bit more CS in mid. I think a lot of this depends on Big Num's rotations. Exactly where he decides to come in and does have a haste rune, but it's not so great on Enchantress since you really need your creeps to be able to catch up. So she's just gonna go see if the hard camp's got something new for her. Gets a centaur. This should be a nice kill. Or at least sets up for some kill potential, depending on where she wants to go. And right now she's just being a jerk. This is going to come harass this line of Prius and make their lane even more painful. In the meantime, Bone has managed to hit level 3. Not as impressive as this 4.5 this Beast Monster have. I was really expecting the Beast Monster to have a harder time. But PR rotating the... Enchantress down here has caused a lot of harass to the, the lines of Prius, and I mean, this beast monster is going to run all over them. He's also got 13 lost hits and a kill to his name. Oh, and the two kill involvements Radiant's from earlier. He's going to be rocking a very early Necro book, and there's just not much they can do about it now. Invoker has picked up one point in that Wex. I don't know if Enchantress has seen that yet, but considering she doesn't have dust, I don't think she'll bother trying to gank that lane. Then he got her. Gonna go try and kill the boar, but already taking a huge amount of damage from Cheshire Cat. They have Fortunes and at the ready. Enchantress coming in from the sidelines, though. Gonna be seen here, so not able to do too much, but now she has the Shockwave creep. Look at how much damage that thing does. 160 in such a big AoE. This top lane becoming very painful for the lineup of Prius. And at 4 minutes in, a 2000 net worth lead. What, a team fight would turn this around, but it's just something where you're. It's so early on and you're already hemorrhaging so much. And while Gadrox is starting to catch up on CS, you can see he's still quite far behind. 23 to the 31 of Illidan, who's not really being contested in that top lane at all. And meanwhile, in mid, Invoker, he's trying to get something done, but having a lot of his int stolen and a DD on the OD. <laughs> Gotta stop saying those acronyms. Zara, trying to go for more, does get the uphill miss. I think if that wasn't an uphill miss, this... Outworld Devourer may have gone for it, but then he got it coming in on the sidelines. Doesn't manage to get the Astral Imprisonment. The Sunstrike hits as well. There's a Cold Snap, but they miss uphill. And with the Fairy Fire, Zyra are going to be completely okay. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Additionally, we see Gadrox down here eating into the trees to Radiant's avoid that Shockwave Creep. Is that is how painful this is. The Primal Roar comes out onto R&M. And I don't think there's an easy way out here. Tries to destroy one creep. Now Gadrox in a lot of trouble. There is a shockwave in five seconds. They don't need it. They have the ball slows. And PR, this bottom lane, I I think you just have to leave it. Like in maybe attempts to transition to the jungle or something. Because this bottom lane is done. They'll get the tower shortly. And there's just no coming back from it. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack.
Also, we're going to be seeing the lead extend to 3,000. Now, there's a stat here. We haven't quite hit it, but if you're if one team has 1,000 lead per minute, they are going to... Statistically, a team with 1,000 lead per minute has never lost. Kind of saving graces and Voka's not doing too poorly, but he's still not going to have excellent timing on that Midas. Hasn't been able to secure a kill on mid. Isn't getting the greatest of CS advantage or anything. So this Invoker is coming out with a probably 9 minute Midas, assuming he doesn't get ganked. And now on bottom, oh no, they're unable to get the deny and then he got him, most likely. Oh, actually going to get the TP out. They don't quite have enough damage yet. The Hadoken coming out a little bit too late from that creep. So, in the meantime, Prius, they don't, their lanes haven't gone great, right? We can all, we can all see that. It's pretty, pretty dang clear. They have some other options, of course, though. You want to get some more levels on the Venge, maybe you need the swap, but I think a smoke up attempting to gank one of these other lanes, they do have a smoke on the Venge and they do have a smoke on the Oracle. Top, not the easiest, because Sven is incredibly tanky with that war cry, giving him plus 10 armor right now, up to plus 20. So I think the OD is their best bet. It's a hard gank on OD because the Astral Imprisonment makes it so difficult to actually kill someone before TP rotations come in. But they have to go for something here. And I think buffing up the Invoker is the play. Enchantress, she does only have two points in that untouchable, but it still becomes really difficult to auto attack her down. And Gadrox needs some relief on this bottom lane. Maybe it's the beast monster who they should try to kill. Venge, gonna be hiding here, hasn't used her smoke yet, doesn't realize how close the Sven is, so if they go on Zara again, gonna be incredibly close. While Chester Cat already has one Necronomicon, level one is up at eight minutes into the game. He doesn't have enough mana to Primal Roar here, but the, the threat is there. Lifesteal is going to come in and try to be a bit harassy. They're not going to get too much done. Gadrox actually transforms into a wolf, but he's just going to go down. It doesn't even matter. Big Num just hitting him with her ult. There's going to be a magic missile for her. The sun strike on the mark. Finally, they find something. Prius getting themselves on the board, but at the cost of losing their Lycan, not a good trade. And without the sun strike on cooldown, whether this smoke will find anything... We'll see. Venge is trying to wrap around here onto Zara. They're gonna need a cold snap to open it and a lot of luck. Actually, Venge is just placing a deep ward. On the meantime, in the top lane, the Oracle goes down. She was trying to desperately get some farm there and it just wasn't working out. Four of the top net worths are all on the lineup of Prius. And this is Almost a 7.5k net worth, over 5,000 experience. The drum's gonna be ready soon on the OD, and top tower Prius, not that they need to, but they can choose to group up and push down some towers and just kind of end the game here. Or they can go for a... Oh, actually, wait. Are you both going drums? They can choose to end the game by grouping up, or they can just play it for the long game, because right now this Sven is gonna have the Lycan's number. Primal Roar comes out on Zenigata between the tier 1 and tier 2. Cheshire Cat going in super hard, but gets the kill with the Necros. They've got a Fortune's End flying out onto him, but where is the follow-up damage? Sunstrike will hit, but it just does a little bit of his health. He doesn't care about a quarter of it. And still, Mastermind taking so much damage from just the boars. Now we're probably going to see Gadrox go down. There's a Fiend's Grip coming out, and Enchantress pounding away with those impetus hits. She gets a nice, easy kill there. J4 sure takes some damage from the wolves, but it's not enough. This one's a bit, a bit of a stump, unfortunately. After last game, where we had such a even game for so long. Unfortunately, just seeing uh, not too much happen here. <laughs> the 
This ancient golem is doing nothing much. The life stealer does have enough money. He might be rushing the radiance here, deciding that that's what his team really needs. It's a pretty sensible thing to do. I'm just not sure. I mean, even a radiance, even the mischance coming out here, I don't think it's going to help as much as they need. Enchantress is working on her drums unless it's something else mad weird. She's gonna have a dragon lance up soon after that, probably the Ags, but OD can pick up a BKB pretty easily. We'll be getting a lot of farm here. The Sven as well can get a BKB so he doesn't have to worry about that Radiance mischance. It's not nearly as threatening I think in a game without so many alternative methods for getting damage on people or so many folks on PR who are already quite tanky, already quite able to auto-attack you. A smoke has come out from them. They've used a lot of these. But Invoker looking like he's going to be the target of choice. There is a Primal Roar at the ready. They've placed a deep ward. They're going to just get him from under the tower. There is a f no false promise out yet. Mastermind taking a lot of damage and he goes down. Physical axes. And now Zenigata also taking damage. Falling here in the mid lane. They couldn't even catch out Cheshire Cat. He lives on 6 health. And finally, Lifestealer manages to find Beastmaster on the other side. This actually puts Lifestealer only 500 gold away from the Relic. So a big pick for them, but they lost a tier 1 tower. They lost complete control of their jungle. And PR just dominating this game. I don't, I don't see a good way to get back. Okay, so rephrase. Prius is relying on PR making mistakes. Prius have some semblance of high ground defense. They can try to use Invoker's toolkit. He's only level nine, but he's got the Midas up. He's going to hopefully be level 11 before the push comes. And especially the high ground push, he should be much higher level than that before the high ground push comes. So he should be able to make something happen here. He's got a lot of spells which will get rid of creeps as they're coming up onto the high ground. But the rest of the lineup of Prius, I mean, sure you can fortunes end a wave, but they don't even have level 6 on their supports. Versus, you know, level 5 to level 8 and 9 on the PR supports. This experience graph really tells you the tale. And Gadrox, he's got... He's got a Vlad's, that's it. Obviously also why Lifestealer didn't go for one. Um, but... There's just not... much saving grace, like... Vlad's will maybe keep you in the fight a little bit. Okay, now now that they have infested an Ancient Black Dragon, they actually have some good deep push. This Fireball is a mini macro pyre, so that is something. They will be able to get creeps uh, at least off of the tower a little bit. You can see the primal roar onto the lifesteal. Cheshire Cat doesn't even care. That's an 80 second cooldown. And at this point in the game, it doesn't matter that he just used that on an illusion. The lifesteal are just gonna wait by... Oh no, what's going on down here? The supports have been found. At least Gedrock's gonna get his way out, but then he got a falling here. And Illidan getting bigger and bigger. He is at 9k net worth. 3k ahead of the next person. Top tower. And they're they're really looking at needing a miracle here. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I I just don't oh, okay, we're gonna see the Sven getting the go onto the Lycan. Lycan does have transformation, and once that's off, you can't really stop it. Sven does have God Strength back up in a few seconds though. So Prius may be thinking they can take this fight, but unfortunately, oh, they're gonna get the swap onto Big Num, but the untouchable! They just really can't do enough to her, they're gonna run after her, and she gets out of range of the autos. It's just, there's no chance of killing off an Enchantress here. On the upside, we are seeing levels coming out on the supports. Everybody has their ult finally in the game. They're only 1100 gold away from having up that radiance, which is something. I know it sounds far, but it it is something. You know, you'll take at this point in the game, you'll take the 17% mischance. I think it's 17. 
Oh, but in the meantime, we're going to be seeing a primal roar and pwn. Monolus and dead. And now back to being the full way away from that Radiance recipe. I don't want to say that it was a bad draft or anything by Prius, but it just feels like they got outlaned. A level of skill coming up from PR, despite not having seen them play in quite a while. They're looking as fresh as they ever were. And now here comes the high ground push. The Aegis is only two minutes left, but doesn't matter, Sven. Playing super aggressively in that bottom lane. They're trying to get two at once. No, the rest of them are rotating around. And OD at the ready still has that Aegis. They pick off the Invoker. They're going in for more. Venge gonna fall here from the auto attacks. And what does Lycan do? The, o the Invoker doesn't have a buyback. If they can catch out Illidan, at least that's something. But the Fiend's Grip comes out. And now there's the False Promise onto Pony. He's trying to kill anyone to blink away from Sven, though. The Fortune's End will hit him, but they don't have the damage. And they're gonna blow up the Lifestealer as well. And Ex Hannity's Eclipse, one more auto attack gets them the Oracle. The only survivor being that Lycan who's just forced to desperately try to find something here. He's walking on his Necronomicon, but it's not going to be coming out soon enough. And that's the GG well played. Base not even broken, but Prius call it. This is the best of three, folks, so we'll be headed into the next one. I do have a co coaster for that, so hopefully we can make some more sense. But Prius might make this a quick 2 0. Either way, folks. Let's get into it. There's going to be a short wait as we get everybody into the lobby. Let me make sure my Cocos is in. But other than that, folks, I'm Llama Down Under. We're going to be joined by the Wonder Cow next time or next game, and we'll see you all shortly.